Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm going to pre present something about uh, what I've been doing for the past two and a half years. I've been working at a, an architectural office as a, as a 3D artist, doing uh, 3D visualizations, of course. Um, <coughs> Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you something about the typical, typical project, projects I do all day, like uh, why do architects even want uh, a 3D visualization, there are some reasons for it, and a uh, short piece of the workflow I do, I'm not going to tell you everything of course, but something, uh, and I end with a case study about uh, an interior design project of a large uh, old building that is, well, my pet project, uh, I like it a lot, so. Um, if you have questions, do interrupt me, or you can interrupt me or, or ask at the, the end. So the typical project I do, it's um, mostly exteriors of, of um, buildings, like uh, houses, housing buildings, uh, commercial buildings. And we do a lot of different projects at the Zwarte Hond, uh, the Black Dog Architects, so that's where I work. Um, but we also do city planning uh, projects, interior design, uh, a few, uh, parks, parking garages, very, very diverse. Now, I work uh, full time at an architectural office, so it's, it's quite different, I think, from freelancing. I got to get different types of projects. Uh, freelancers typically only get uh, projects that need to be sold and for marketing pictures, and they need beautiful pictures with, uh, to, to sell the project or in the newspapers. But what I get is, is, um, is uh, that and uh, more like, uh, like um, in the design phase, phase they want uh, to see 3D visualizations and make uh, alternatives to see how it's going to be. So first type of project is internal feedback, what I'm telling, told you. It's, a, it's, it's very difficult to imagine how a space is going to be, even for an architect, from 2D, just 2D drawings. It's, it's, it, it doesn't say that much. And, uh, well, it's, it's very good to see how it's, it gets, and you can see the, the, the flaws in the design. So it's, it's going to save you a lot of money in the long run. Uh, okay, so th this is, uh, these projects are very fast, and it's just um, put, it put some, some elevations and, uh, in 3D and add some faces and make a screenshot, and they can sketch over it. It's, it's nothing special like this project. We did, we did, we did a lot of, of, of uh, alternatives in here. Even the architect, he, he used to sit beside me and tell me, ah, oh, that building needs to be a bit higher and, you know, very, very quick stuff. Um, okay. Winning competitions. Um, they are very common in the architectural world. It's, it's yeah, I, I think English people call it pitches or something. That uh, they uh, let a couple of architects uh, make a design, a quick design, and then they see, uh, you know, they choose the best, and he, he gets to further develop the plan. And uh, while well, winning a competition is all about it, the idea, uh, the concept of the building, it's not about details, it doesn't have to, to be right or anything. Uh, and they're very snappy projects, very fast, like this project. This is the same model as I showed you the screenshots from, but it's, it's a bit more, more better rendered. Um, this is, by the way, it's rendered by a, a script I've written uh, to, uh, um, to render out render passes. Uh, it's, it's, it's two passes. It's a, it's a radiosity pass, very simple uh, Jeffrey pass with only white material, so it's very fast, and the line drawing pass, which is also very, very fast, and I overlay that in Photoshop. Uh, same project, but a close-up of a, uh, a facade. Uh, this, this took me one day, a long day, but anyway, <laughs> it was a stressful job. It's also a competition we lost, but whatever. <laughs> Done lots of competitions. <laughs> Very small. These are very, very, very tight deadline projects. It's, it's just to get an idea of the building. Uh, next up is client presentations to convey the design to the client because you need to sell, even if you've got the project, you still have to, uh, to convince the client that you're going the right way. Um, this kind of presentation can get quite a, quite a 
quite irritating sometimes because of the, the revisions for each presentation. It's, uh, they need to, you're not designing uh, much yourself. It's, it's just you need to modify the, the building to the new design, and yeah, that's boring. But anyway, these are uh, uh, pictures uh, I made for, uh, for a parking garage. It's, uh, it was quite a challenge to make, make, uh, make, make nice images of a parking <laughs> garage. I actually used about uh, three suns with different colors and uh, ambient occlusion and everything to get it uh, look a bit nice. Yeah, <laughs> to, to, to get it as ba good as this, yeah. Uh, this was also uh, for a client presentation, a park. A small bicycle rack uh, design. Houses, of course. Uh, this is a good example of revisions. This building has seen about eight revisions, and I was uh, <laughs> sick of it. <laughs> but anyway, it turned out nice. Uh, this is one recent project. Uh, okay, so, so the, the marketing pictures, the, the ones that uh, freelancers typically get. Um, it's, uh, the goal of these pictures is to sell apartments or office space and uh, they're uh, mostly uh, published in, picture, uh, in uh, newspapers. Uh, they are at a very late stage uh, in the design, so no, no revisions, so it's perfect. You just make it, you try to get a nice picture, render it, and uh, well, it's a uh, minimal revision. Better deadlines also because the client pays for it, so it's good. This is an example of it. Uh, some houses in a city in northern Holland. These are also uh, houses. This picture is actually made with Vibrate, but I had to show it. <laughs> anyway, complete neighborhood of uh, houses, a close up of it. And uh, this is one of the most recent projects I did. It's an old villa which burned down. And uh, they're going to rebuild it and uh, do uh, similar styled housing blocks uh, around it, about six blocks uh, around it. Uh, this project is the first project I ever did at uh, the Zwarte Hond. It's, uh, it's, it's one of the, it's, it's more of a, a, a a special project for it. So we don't make much money for it. It's, it's more, uh, more of a... Well, we don't make much money for it. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's, a, it's an old, old uh, power plant. It's from the 1920s, and it's, 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 uh, uh, it was a complete dump. It's, it was a favorite sleeping place for junkies and stuff. And uh, they decided to, uh, to renovate it and to turn it into a um, uh, media media-oriented uh, office space for uh, television companies and uh, so, so, so that sort of project. Well, uh, when I first uh, created this, oh, I'll come to that later. This is an interior of the same project. I even did an animation of this because the, the client wanted to uh, yeah, sell the office space and we made a small anim animation. I'm not showing that here, but it's the uh, same quality. This is the, the first uh, pictures I made there. It, 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 it was made uh, two and a half years ago with uh, Jeff Ray, two years maybe. Uh, this took me one whole weekend to render. And it, it shows how, how much Blender has progressed because this, this isn't doable. It's, I've got two tight deadlines, that's not possible. Uh, this picture, I think if I... We call correctly maybe maybe half an hour render at, at higher resolutions, much higher resolutions, and th that allowed me to make an, even an animation with it at a, l a lower resolution, of course. But it, it, the animation took about five minutes per frame, I think. So it's very doable. Um, ah, that's the last project type is uh, sketches of details. They, uh, I get those uh, projects more often now because um, they see that I can you know, sketch something in 3D very fast and uh, explain to the, a contractor how to build something because otherwise they're then going to, uh, to think of something else uh, themselves and that architects don't like that. So 
just simple sketches. Oh, still one more it's a project type to go. Building aesthetics supervision. Yeah, that's how it's called. Um, in Holland, there's many regula regulations. So like in Belgium, you can build everything you like. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a mess. But here, here there are many, many regula regulations. Uh, it has to pass a couple of com commissions. Uh, they, they are going to see if it's go uh, going to fit in the surroundings. And, well, they mostly want photo montages for it. Uh, these are um, mostly projects that are in uh, old city cores that are very uh, sensitive for people that, that they don't want to destroy the old look of the city. Mostly uh, old buildings get, get uh, demolished for them. So it, it, it's, uh, it takes some, uh, something to, to uh, make them understand that it's a good plan. Uh, well, it's, it's a crappy picture I had to do it with, but anyway, it's uh, one of those. This is uh, just a, a street further. Very funny. It's uh, an ap apartment block. It's very old, by the way. This is uh, just on the other side of the road from where I work. This is my, uh, my view from the office. Uh, th this building in the middle is... Uh, I don't know if this is the last version, but we did a lot of revisions b uh, just because of the, the buildings, uh, that committee. They, they suggested things that the, the, the brick didn't fit in. It needs to be red or green or I don't know. So... We did a lot of revisions. Very sensitive, this project has been in, 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 in the newspaper for, for I don't know how many times discussions that, uh, well, that they didn't want uh, the old city core to be uh, demolished and stuff. This is on an island. It's also uh, on uh, one of on Schiem on the Koog. It's also, uh, it, this is a, how do you call it? It's a sort, a sort of a hotel camping side kind of thing but it's, uh, it's, it's it turned out more, more luxurious than that close up view and uh, to show you how many revisions I get uh, this is the project now yeah remember it and now two slides further this is how, I, how it turned out uh, <laughs> just a couple of months ago completely different completely different project it's, it's, it has nothing to do with the project at first um, so why do architects want a 3D impression? Because of the realism. Uh, it's uh, hard to fake. Uh, if you have, uh, have uh, traditional hand-drawn uh, sketches, you can fake everything. You can uh, just join lines and no, no one, no one's, it, it, it doesn't say all that much. And, and you can hide a very bad design behind a very cool drawing style. Uh, the freedom to experiment and change details, well, it's very easy, but it's very tedious. Animation is an option, and skill, but still, skill models are very popular. They're, they're uh, made with, uh, even if I make a 3D, they also make a skill model of the project, just a simple, so they can have it in their hand to show. Uh, I'm going to tell you a small overview of what the workflow is. Um, I start up with uh, cleaning, exporting, importing the cut drawings. Uh, the, the cut drawings are very imprecise. You, would, you wouldn't think so. When I first uh, started working at an architect's office, I, I, I'm no architect, by the way. I'm, I studied electronics. And when I came there, I thought, well, uh, this isn't going to be a problem that I need to be, uh, work very, very precise and, uh, and uh, with Blender. But it turned out, turned out to be that I work much more precise than most architects do in, in this phase. It's, it's in the design phase, so they, it's, it's all just uh, out of the loose hand. It's not, not very precise. That's, that's in a later stage. Uh, then I model the building. I texture it. Uh, very important texturing in uh, an architectural visualization. Uh, placing the cameras and lighting, of course. Rendering and post-processing. Um, this is how... Yeah. I, uh, the, the architects at my office, they use uh, Factorworks, um, and I need to do quite some tricks to get it out. 
I, I need to select everything, ungroup it, ungroup it, ungroup it, ungroup it, desymbolize it, ungroup it, ungroup it, ungroup it, ungroup it, then turn it into lines, change the dimensions to meters, uh, select all uh, 3D uh, snapping points that are there, delete them, and uh, t turn every, a couple of these tabs, and then export to our, our version 11 AutoCAD file, DXF, and then it imports perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I learned that in the years. So this is how, how um, well, this is a quite detailed version. It's not a very good example, but this is how a Factorworks uh, drawing looks like. Uh, lots of rubbish in there, blue lines uh, noting the, the, the floors and, and shadows all over the place. I want a clean image, so th this is what I also do. I, I delete every, every shadow, everything I don't need uh, first to get a clean drawing to work from. Very important. And then this is what I get in Blender, just a bunch of points and lines. Um, well, the modeling is, you can, can understand, it's, it's uh, selecting a lot of points and uh, creating faces between them. Uh, it's, um, yeah, sometimes it's, it's more difficult than that, but that's it. Texturing is very important. Um, I spent quite a lot of time on making textures because... Uh, well, the thing most, that most bugs me is the repetition of textures on uh, buildings. It completely destroys the illusion. So I, I created a Python script that generates, um, well, generates, and it needs a lot of handwork, but uh, it, it semi-automatically semi generates tileable textures with, uh, well, huge maps that don't rep repeat. And I'm going to release a CD of them. Buy it. <laughs> This is um, Photoshop. It's getting more and more important. I, um, uh, sometimes uh, the export uh, I get from uh, the render I get from, from Blender is very, very crappy. It, it looks like nothing. But then Photoshop turns it into something cool. Well, I do it, but with the help of Photoshop. So this is, uh, for example, this is uh, the, 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 the picture I, of a photo montage you saw it earlier. This is the, the actual Blender render. It looks like shit. Uh, I, the same uh, render parse script that I showed earlier uh, with uh, that competition model, I, I can also uh, render out material masks for glass, for example. And uh, I add reflections, I uh, draw over the trees and stuff, and yeah, then you get this. And adding some, uh, some lantern poles in front of it, so it's really, it fits in. In this phase also, uh, this picture doesn't have people, but people are also very important in uh, visualizations mostly to get a, a sense of scale and that it's alive. Last part of my presentation is a case study about uh, the Hanse Societeit. It's a society building, uh, uh, well, my pet project, as I said. It's, it's the most fun project uh, I've got there. It's, uh, it's an old building in the city of uh, Groningen, it's the, the most uh, to the right. It's, um, it, it's, it's, it's got lot of, lots of architectural details, uh, located in the heart, uh, city heart of Groningen, uh, from the 1900s uh, around then. It's been, uh, back then it was a bank building, and it has been uh, a tax collecting office, and it, it, it even housed, uh, housed a church, church club once. And... Uh, now it's time for, uh, for uh, this society club that is just starting up to, uh, to make it their home. <coughs> close up of the building. Um, this society, it's, uh, its goal is to pr provide a meeting point for business people and uh, to have a, it, it's a kind of a bar and it's a conference room like this and something like that. Uh, the project for us was to renovate the building it was a mess in the 1970s it was, everything was, was lost behind uh, plates and, uh, and, and a carpet was, over, uh, was thrown over good floors and it, it, it lost all of its uh, original character so bring it back the interior design that's the most of the project uh, partition the, the, the building uh, to, to fit the new uh, new uh, new functions of the club to, uh, and this also um, involved uh, breaking some walls and adding new ones and, and uh, adding roofs and stuff 
the back garden we needed to design the front elevation uh, we did some work on lighting and uh, on uh, the old uh, cellar windows were brought back it was quite some work on the on the building it was um, quite a mess uh, well, the job for me was to uh, to check out the, the interior design to help out uh, visualize it. And uh, initially, I was to do one or two rooms to to see how uh, they had problems with how to to do it. They didn't couldn't really see how it was going to be, so they asked me to do a room. This is very very different from exteriors. Um, it's an old building, non-accurate drawings. Uh, I did I did a lot of just by uh, by looking at photos and uh, and just doing something <laughs> so this is the drawings i used for this project this kind of drawings it's uh yeah to, to do, yeah and uh, a floor plan with some elevations of the 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 walls this is the first room i started with it's a lounge and uh well, it was nothing special, just uh, a, a small image. Th this is uh, the first result. Um, they, um, it's a lounge room. There's some chairs, a bookcase, a fireplace. Very easy to... Uh, well, the fireplace was nice to model, but it's, it's, it's nothing very special. Just an get an impression of the room. Um, what we did with this room is um, do some experiments with the wallpaper. Uh, and uh, the fabric of the chairs and the, the texture of the well, texture the, the floorboards this is a bit later but and it's still the same about the wallpaper what I told you it's, um, it's, it, they, it was their idea to bring back the old original wallpaper but make it a bit more modern so uh, the interior architect uh, peeled off all the walls and uh, got this piece of uh, wallpaper from behind. Um, so I was uh, I was asked to, to in Photoshop make this a uh, modern modern pattern, uh, modernize it, make it tileable, uh, a pixel pattern, and do some uh, variations with color and size of the pattern and stuff. So this is a. Uh, from this piece of paper, I had another piece of paper also. I created this tileable, uh, tileable piece of. Uh, I don't know if this one is tileable, but I created a tileable version, and we did a lot of color testing like uh, this. And this is the the pattern that it's going to be. It's, it, it looks better in print than it do, looks on screen. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, on the t uh, in the lower part we will use this color and on the uh, top part uh, we will use uh, this color, uh, two levels of the building. Next room was a bar, which was more of a challenge. It was a, well, a kind of hip bar. With all, uh, I modeled this, I think, with curves and meshes and I don't know how. But anyway, this was fun to do, very fun. And well, they liked it. So. Um, uh, but the thing that bugged me most was it was very difficult to show the entire design with just one camera. You get a very, very distorted camera, and this not not very useful. So what I thought of was to make cubic QuickTime VRs. This is the first attempt I did. It's not very... This screen play. It's very dark and it's not not very special, but it's the first test I did to to a proof of a proof of concept to to show the architects that uh, I could do it and uh, let's do it this way. So very simple, and you can uh, yeah you can this is a much better way to present stuff and to uh, to look at it. And uh, they liked it, so I continued with the bar <laughs> like this it's, that's me <laughs> I shamefully plug myself into every every uh, illustration to get uh, some recognition <laughs> yeah <laughs> well this isn't very good yet uh, mouse back. 
right? Yes. So um, they decided that it was very, very, very useful. My, my visualizations, also the little parts that we changed, so it was very useful for them. So we decided to do a lot of more, a lot more rooms. Uh, and because of the frequent revisions I would get, I created a small workflow. Uh, I took the uh, script by Joshua Siever that, that uh, makes our camera so that it renders out uh, cubic VR. It's, it's very simple, by the way. Um, then made a little script that takes these six images that it produces and uh, put it into one big photos uh, Photoshop editable file. And then uh, after Photoshop, a complementary script to uh, debox de it. And then GoCubic uh, creates the uh, QuickTime VR. Let's illustrate this. This is are the six images produced by uh, by the script of Jess Receiver. Uh, it's it's it, yeah okay next. Um, I put it together with my box uh, box script. It's kind of a paper craft model you made in the in the elementary school. Uh, with all the images in one file, it was very easy to add some people. Yeah, you hardly see it in this version, but and color correction and stuff. And then you can see the principle of a cubic VR. It just is a box with you in the middle, and you can rotate to look around. Um, so yeah, that's useful. I said that. Um, and they will uh, would also use it for a presentation instead of paper sketches. Uh, they wanted me to present this. It was really a lot of fun to add uh, details. I, uh, I modeled the uh, old chairs, uh, old Renaissance chairs, furniture, lighting, and books, dishes, and cups, and to make it uh, feel alive, less, uh, less of a 3D model. Um, yeah, lighting and rendering. rendering. This was very important for the, to get the good atmosphere. Uh, it was really no option to get uh, Jeff Ray to render this because of the revisions and the long render times. and. Uh, real global illumination was just out of the question. So I opted for uh, ambient occlusion, which is very fast. It's the best thing that ever happened to Blender. Um, each panorama still takes one to three hours to render. So it's, it's still quite some time. I don't know if everyone knows what ambient occlusion is, but oh, it's very important to know because it's, it's like, like uh, real radiosity, but it's, it's fake, <laughs> and it, <laughs> it, it, it just adds, adds, adds dirty edges in the edges, so every corner becomes dirty. It's, it's like uh, uh, occlusion is like um, radiosity, but with a fall of distance. So um, it's particularly good for interiors, because uh, you can say, after one meters, I don't care what's there anymore. I want it to be light. If you uh, encounter an object within one meter, then it's shaded. It's, it's uh, in the shade. So it's very, very fast because it doesn't take the whole entire scene into consideration and it works very good. On to the real stuff, the final images. Start with the lounge that I first showed you, the first room. Ah, yeah, oh, that's my cursor, yeah. So, um, yeah, this is what, how it turned out. It's not the, the latest version. The, the, these lamps have changed, and, well, it's, uh, it's still changing. It's, it's, it's supposed to be done uh, early November. Yeah, that's <laughs> me again. <laughs> but anyway, it's still changing a lot. We've got the fireplace and stuff. Um, the next one is the bar. Let's who see who we'll, we'll see there. <laughs> yeah. As you see, it's it's much better than the first. Uh, the, the lighting it took me. I, I did a much, lot better job at the lighting in the, the, the recent pictures. I first did it with. Uh, I didn't trust um, area lights because they're very very hard to tweak. I used uh, a lot of lot of point lights, but. Uh, after uh, a time, I, uh, I decided to go for uh, for the area lights, and they turned out very good, very good. 
and quite fast anyway. Oh, maybe maybe I overdid it a bit with myself, but okay. <laughs> Next room is the patio. It's uh, this was um, an out outside room first. Let's switch. But we decided to uh, to to make a, a glass roof over it oh. to get some more space, and it's it, it turned out very nice, I think. This is the glass roof you uh, you see. So this is the the building uh, building elevation. The glass roof you put uh, on top of it. Here you've got the bar. Oh, someone else <laughs> for a change. Well. This is a big conference room like this. It's uh, like I said, the building was, is very beautiful uh, underneath all the 70s uh, revisions. So it's it, it got a very very nice uh, glass uh, ceiling, which we of, of course uh, restore in its original state. And of course, I cannot only shop myself in, but these are the clients, the, the, the starters of the... <laughs> it was a good laugh at the presentation then, <laughs> to see themselves. Uh, as you see, that, uh, we, we did quite a lot of rooms. Not all of them, but quite a lot of them. This is beneath the, um, uh, the patio I, uh, with the glass roof I just uh, showed you. There are uh, openings uh, with glass in it uh, here and here and here also. Because so it's, it's, it's kind of floating in the air, this, uh, this floor. And uh, yeah, like that. Just one or two to go. Ooh. Another bar at the ground floor. The, the, the um, building was divided into two sections. The first floor, uh, the ground floor, I mean, is for uh, more public uh, space. You, you saw the conference room and uh, this bar and, uh, and a couple of restaurants just to uh, people can hire the room for their conferences and uh, lectures and stuff. Uh, on the first floor, you've got the, um, uh, the society uh, for members only uh, part, more meeting place for members. And this is the bar downside. It's, it's similar to the, the first one, but it's a different material, and uh, you don't get, have uh, bar stools here. You've got to stand. And, and final, finally the restaurant in the front here you see the wallpaper looks better in reality <laughs> these old chairs they, they were fun to model we had one in the, in the lobby and we, I took pictures of them and uh, I actually finished it in about an hour it was very, very fun to do the bar the area lights be beneath the, the benches. You see them here turning up nice. Okay, so that was my. On to the next slide. Uh, I'll, I'll show you how, I, how it is in uh, what, which state it is now. It's going to be finished uh, somewhere early November, I said. But uh, this is how it uh, was last Tuesday. I filmed a small film. So they've got quite some work to do. This is the bar, <laughs> as you see. <laughs> this is the patio with the roof. The roof is there. As the, at least they'll be dry. Again in the bar. 
that's that's part of the design of the bar that it goes over over you, so the, all the tubing gets uh, gets uh, hidden behind it. This is the fireplace, as you see. <laughs> the bar in front, and that's it, I guess. Oh yeah, I've got yeah. Okay. This is the restaurant uh, beneath the, the floor, the, the floating floor. And we finish with the big hall. This is how it really is. Okay, so final thoughts about this project. The, the clients were really thrilled. They were very excited. They, uh, yeah, it was nice to present it to them. Um, uh, the, it, I think this 3D model has really made a difference. It's not just to sell uh, sell uh, sell a building. It's it's really useful to have a 3D in the design phase, to m make quick alternatives, color studies, and uh, it's really ex uh, it, it paid off. Uh, one thing I think disappointed me is that the real rooms, if, when you're really standing there, they look very, very much bigger than they look in uh, QuickTime VRs or in pictures or in videos, anything. So I might look into uh, doing more um, stereoscopic uh, things. I think that will be nicer. Uh, oh yeah, this is my conclusion of, of the whole presentation, almost. Uh, many short projects, that's the life of... Uh, uh, my life at an architectural office. Uh, that's both good and, bo and bad. It's, I mean, it's, uh, it's hard to get bored by a single project. So it's, uh, that's good. It's, uh, yeah, I like it. Huge amounts of revisions. That's the b worst part of it. Short deadlines. Sometimes nice, sometimes no. Exposure. You get in, uh, in newspapers and uh, magazines and stuff. It's cool. It's not as uh, glamorous as film, but I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, it's cool. Um, architecture is a bit repetitive, so it can become boring to make the models and stuff. But um, it's, I'm, I find mo much more, more time now and fun to create uh, Python scripts to do the, the tedious work. Okay, this presentation is about a bit about Blender being used commercially, so I cannot do without this slide. Uh, there are many specialist architecture packages, packages like um, 3D Studio Viz and, and uh, Revit and architectural design tools. But if you see the output, it's, it's, it just doesn't compare to, to an artist tool, which Blender is. The, the lighting stuff, you, you just don't get it with those programs. Uh, best of all is the speed. Um, I have used Lightwave in my, in my starting year because the blender didn't have ambient occlusion yet and ray tracing yet, so I did use Lightwave. But now I use Blender again. It's, it's, uh, there's no, no program that, that makes my deadlines like this. It's, it's so fast. And Python, of course. I want to thank uh, the Swarte Hund uh, for letting me show this, and uh, Nicole, who is the interior architect, and also the Society uh, Club, which also uh, authorized me showing this. So, questions? Yeah, a lot of time. A lot of time. The first couple of rooms were done in a, in a, in a couple of days, but um, this t project really took a lot of time because they th thought it was so useful and th the many revisions, the bar has changed a lot since the first uh, time I did it. it, but it was fun, it was very very much fun. I think I cannot really do an estimate on it anyway, it, I, it took me weeks and weeks. It's, uh, more like months than weeks. Yeah, <laughs> well in, in, in full time it's going to be uh, more than, maybe more than a month, but not, not much more than a month. A lot of time, yeah. Anyway. Oh, you first. <laughs> Both, everything. Uh, uh, Blender is, um, I think, uh, a lot of... 
a lot of uh, the specialist packages, they have um, uh, options to do very difficult things very fast, like doing, they've got window frames in them, and it's just a click, and there you've got them. But this is a really simple th things, like, like just creating a wall and, and, and just polygon modeling, it's very, very simple in Blender, and, and th therefore it's very fast. And rendering as well, the ambient occlusion, uh, it's, it's so, so fast, it's very fast. Um, my renderings rarely take over half an hour to render uh, these days at, at very good resolution, at A3 print quality uh, resolution. So, and, and for really big projects, I also wrote a very small Python script that uh, takes over all the machines in the office. <laughs> it really, really works good. So both, yeah. And Heard it? It's, it's the, 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 he asked if the, the QuickTime thing was open source, right? Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> there's, there, there are free programs to create it. Go Cubic, and for a Mac, there's another one. I don't know what its name was. Cubic and some, Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. And um, it's, they, they, these are free programs. So it's, it's not open source, but it's free. Okay. Oh, so it is open source. No, no, no. Oh, half open source. Yeah. Would be very nice. Yeah. Tomorrow it's finished. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You mentioned your love of Photoshop, and I'm just curious whether you give this heading in the direction that will ultimately intersect your needs, or if you this going in some different direction that will ultimately help you. Well, GIMP is cool. You can do everything with GIMP. Uh, it, it, it has the same power as. <laughs> yeah, and it's got. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's good. It can do anything you want, but not fast. Um, I, I, you, I use Windows and, and, and Macintosh, but um, maybe it's on Linux it's better, but uh, when I have to, to switch to the toolbar, I have to click once and click twice to get, uh, once to activate it, and the, the interface is very clumsy. Photoshop is, 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 has a long history, and it's, um, it's got lo lots of small things that are, are really productive, and uh, the mem image memory handling and stuff, it's... it's I think it's much better. It's, it's not open source, of course, but it's, uh, it's very to, to much faster to, uh, to work with, I think. Any more questions? No? Okay, now, thanks for the...